So here we go, another commentary on the recent short film I made, Dark Roast, my first one of the year. Sorry guys, it's been a minute to put out these videos, but at least they're being made and I'm working on them as soon as humanly possible. But again, we're going to have to get it together with these schedules and all that with all, all these crew and actors and everything. But luckily this one, I return to the basics, just me, cast and crew, a uh, total of four people on this short film, so it was very quick. But there was some complications making it. For example, the person who was letting us use the location, very nice man, unfortunately had a flu that day and was hesitant on whether to actually shoot that day or prolong it for a different day. But this was a very hard shoot to get everyone together on the same schedule. So I said, you know what, let's just go ahead and film. If you can do it, that'd be amazing. Uh, but, but I'm not going to have my actors reschedule this one because this took a, a long time to get them all together. They all have busy schedules. And on top of that, one of my other actors was unable to make it uh, on time. And it, it's completely understandable, but he wasn't able to make it until like the last hour of what was supposed to be a three-hour call time. And so all of these shots as you're seeing right now, those are basically the first or second uh, take. We weren't able to go with even a third take. So these are all the first and second takes. And that's why this movie may seem as if the setups aren't really there or it, it kind of transitions from one extreme to the other so quickly. But that's because uh, from all this amalgamation of footage I had, it was uh, very difficult to get those setups where I wanted them so that the story could go uh, ahead. Again, I chose to film at 70 millimeter. Uh, based off a of recommendation of, I usually use the kit lens. Honestly, I'm a very, uh, very, uh, what is it called? Nuts and bolts director at the moment. I don't really have any fancy gear or anything like that if I'm the director and the sound man and all that. So I have a nuts and bolts and I usually use the kit lens to film all these movies so far uh, if I am the director. But for this one, I decided to use a 70 millimeter lens that I also got as a gift and hoping it would erase some of the noise and some, you know, some of the blur. It did, it was very clear, very clear that the 70 millimeter when placed right was far superior than uh, any of the kit lens uh, that I had available. I chose to go in black and white, mainly to get the aesthetic of the cafe and the, really to get the tone of the movie out there. I think if I was to do color, none of the colors stood out to me, at, at least when I was filming it in the cafe we were in and all the wardrobe from the actors or anything. None of the colors really stood out to me to really mean anything. They didn't really like stand out or bring attention to themselves. So I just decided to like cut out all color and just make this black and white. That way you can focus more on the characters and the dialogue and how the story goes along from there. Do I have any inspiration from this story? Uh, seeing a lot of people fall in love and just the differences it makes between a friendship, really. That That's kind of it. Not even necessarily in my life, but just seeing it from other people. Like, for example, having a friend and a friend of a friend falls in love. And then you see how, you know, that friendship slowly disintegrates into something it wasn't before the relationship happened. That's very interesting to me. I like exploring that dynamic. Like that specific shot of her taking down her hair, that almost didn't happen. I had to do a close-up of that because there was no cutaway footage of her really uh, going from a pinup hair to her hair down. So I had to, I had to look through the archives and like find one. And luckily, I found just a random, random cutaway shot from what I was filming before in the day, and she was putting her hair down. So luckily, we got that. And the lighting in her area was, you know, it just so happened to be perfect. In his, not so much. And that was mainly just because I didn't have any excess lighting. I did, I just literally did natural lighting. Whatever was in the cafe, that's what I had to use. Because I didn't have any uh, other uh, big lights with me for this one. But luckily where she was, the light was just 
perfect right there in that area. And there was a couple spots in the cafe where the lighting was perfect as well, but it just wouldn't make sense stylistically to have them in those spots. And this was a spot I really thought would bring the characters to life. Again, I got all these actors from SAC casting, and the reason why I chose them is uh, that that's Christopher Allen, and he's actually a comedian in real life, shout out. So he knows the life, the, the, the where he knows where the jokes, where the comedic side is coming from. And then my other actress right here, Audrey Booth, I saw her, I think it was in a horror short film on YouTube, and for one second she says the F word, and I was like, okay, perfect. That's a, that's a girl I can curse. And come to find out she doesn't really curse in real life. That's a little side fact. But she's very good, very good at uh, portraying this character that I had mapped out for her. Again, this is a small cafe we were in just after everyone was done for the day. There's people that had been there from 5 in the morning. And we came there at like uh, 6 at night to 9 at night. So they were just, they were there from five in the morning to about like five thirty six, and so everyone else was clearing out the employees and everything, and so we really had the cafe to ourselves, and again the really hard part was trying to get the audio right from all the overhead noise that we had around us, and there we go. Hope you enjoyed it.